If you're a purposeful woman in a stuck or difficult situation at work or home, I'm going to share how you can finally stop doubting, censoring, compromising, or abandoning yourself. Find your voice and unapologetically live your vision without letting others' fears, limits, or negativity drain or distract you from your important work. I'll be showing you a simple system that turns victimization and self-sabotage into unshakable self-love, confidence, and power so you feel safe, seen, and supported no matter what. It's a unique approach that takes the guesswork out of inner work for personal and professional results that are rapid, reliable, and sustainable. I'll be giving you a lot of helpful information today, so I decided to divide it into three parts. Part one, the nine misconceptions and failed promises in the spiritual or other space that will keep you stuck, seeking, and disempowered at home and work. In part two, I'll show you a simple method for ending regret and self-criticism so you feel safe, seen, and supported no matter what, standing with, by, and for you in self-solidarity, something that I've finally came to achieve, even in situations where you have felt minimized and powerless, whether it's by others or by your own inner critic. Part three pulls it all together with my signature system for harnessing the symmetry in whatever hurts or sabotages your goals, so you can turn your greatest challenges into your greatest breakthroughs and into your direct path to confidence in yourself and your decisions, safe, synergistic connections at work and at home, and calm, focused action. This training is about what you can do to take care of the internal thoughts and decisions that led you further and further away from your original childlike, energetic, happy self and your highest vision for yourself, your family, your company, and the greater good. So how can you stop the draining and distracting reactivity to others and life and get the ball back in your court where you feel stuck and no matter what you've tried, you just don't know how to shift the dynamics. Maybe you're tolerating things you don't want and are compromising yourself without a clue how to get your needs met. Or much of your thought energy goes toward worrying about or railing against the person or situation. You have a message to get out or a mission to accomplish, but keep turning away from that vision to put out fires or wait for support or approval or permission. Either way, you're li you've likely lost yourself over time and feel the need to get you back. If this sounds familiar, I want you to know you really can come home and stand with, by, and for yourself and what you want and need, like Kaylee is learning to. Even while starting her own high-profile entrepreneur endeavor at a young age and then creating another powerful business, she had always been diligent in her spirituality and inner work. Yet, it wasn't until she started practicing my no matter what way that she finally saw the costs of having abandoned, censored, and compromised herself in childhood, in her work, and in her marriage. Soon she gained the self-acceptance and self-solidarity that allowed her to stop agreeing to things in her marriage and work that did not serve her well-being and life vision. And she's begun building a life that fits and feeds her. You're in the right place if you've begun to recognize the deep costs of the ways you do any of the following. Turn yourself into a pretzel, bending over backwards to please and placate. Drain yourself, trying to fix things so everyone is happy, even trying to save them from their own pain, shame, fear, or addiction, sometimes alienating the very people you wanted to help. Maybe you ignore your own pain and self-care, feeling you need to meet others' needs first, which puts you at the bottom of the barrel. Maybe you abandon your dear self as your mind goes into endless loops of regret, self-criticism, and second-guessing your decisions while at the same time you feel resentful that the important people aren't supporting you and no one else seems to be stepping up and carrying their own weight and that if you want anything done right it seems like you need to do it yourself finally maybe you've been focused on all that so much that you've lost 
aspects of the fearless, playful, creative parts of yourself. And that's also what keeps you healthy and happy. So like Nancy, the longtime CFO of their family business, who quickly began to see how the whole thing was an inside job so she could clear it up from the inside for real change on the outside. She was in a really low place when she arrived at her first retreat with me, but then she found herself quickly bonding with the other women and became familiar with her self-limiting thought patterns. I'll tell you, after 17 retreats, that kind of bonding is a regular occurrence. So Nancy then began to efficiently transform one area of her life after another in our mastermind group and reinvested in herself, her work, and her marriage. She cleared up issues around her husband, her grown son, her professional burnout, her health, and her aging mother. She created an office space in their house and quickly realized her dream of becoming a thriving coach herself and buying an RV. It is so much fun to watch the transformations in our online groups, in that case where she grabbed hold of these tools for internal and external change and quickly started to get out of her own way and get herself, her self-esteem, and her life back. Once you know how to turn your self-sabotage style into a self-love superpower, you no longer give old patterns the power to paralyze you and drive a wedge of self-doubt and self-censoring between you and your dream life. Whether it is your partner, your boss, someone you supervise, a neighbor, parents, grown or a growing child, if you're really honest with yourself, you may feel unsupported or even abandoned by others. Maybe your ideas, input, and impact are minimized or ignored. And somewhere along the line, you started to abandon yourself to please and placate, maybe dropping into depression or having lots of physical symptoms. It may be that you don't feel safe asking for what you really want in your most important relationships and simply do not know how to get your needs met, feeling angry and hurt, but you just keep working on yourself without creating sustainable change or finding sustainable peace. Like Sarah, who had worked really hard on herself and was very spiritually savvy, even guiding others, but had many challenges in her health and home life when I met her. She had left her career behind, and the intense dynamics of her marriage had triggered all her childhood wounds, having her fall into kind of a debilitating powerlessness. Actually, it reminded me of myself at that age, the high anxiety that left me disempowering myself when it mattered most, and that eventually caused my health my career and my marriage to crash. But with the changes in Sarah, her life took a different turn before that total crash came. The simple steps I teach gave her the self-compassion, clarity, and confidence to stop putting her needs last and start believing that she is enough, has enough, does enough, well enough. The women in our self-love mastermind group and I supported her through her fear of standing up for herself on so many levels she had given up on. She committed to a healing food regimen, worked through her fear of asking for what she wants, and negotiated many changes, large and small, that made her marriage a pretty amazing place. She worked through issues around balance of power and money in her relationships, including taking the scary risk to get support from her husband to invest time and money to attend my retreats, which became a huge turning point. Once she got this missing piece and used her upsets to see how the fear and shaming were an inside job, she could stop abandoning herself and blaming others for her reactivity. She started to align with ways of being in the world that worked for her and let her contributions count. She regained her health, her faith in herself, and her ability to create meaningful for work from home and she could now harness her fear of others anger and shaming and let the triggering people and events in her life shepherd her confidently toward her dreams this new way of being in the world enhanced and in some cases replaced the other inner work she and her husband were already doing With her newfound self-solidarity setting a a different tone for their marriage, together they made a lot of tangible changes. The outcome? 
a life that supports it, energizes her, and a safe, nurturing space for herself, her work as a writer and author coach, her husband, and their children. You know, that was a long story, but it really encapsulates many of the changes that we can count on in these groups. And so while you're just getting a taste of the results, you can see that what I'm about to share really transforms lives. So this training is for you if you know that nothing is more important than the quality of your life and connection than the messages you give your children, your co-workers, your spouse, and yourself through your thoughts and your behavior, and then the impact you can have by coming home to who you really are. Bottom line, this is for you if you are serious about real change and want a simple, spiritually sound, 100% reliable path to meaningful connection and contribution, which includes work-life freedom and fulfillment where your ideas and input are valued. It's a dependable kind of self-evolution that brings joy and peace in all your relationships, especially the one with yourself for the rest of your life. This training is not for you if you are only 50 to 75 percent serious about real change around some aspect of your life. It might be that everything is fine in most places, but as long as you are really committed to change in at least one area where you're suffering, then this is for you. This is not for you if you are more invested in memorizing communication formulas or following the advice of gurus and readings than shifting to a new way of viewing pain and problems where you trust life's lessons and respond organically as situations arise. If you'd rather make excuses than make things happen, this training is not for you. But you know what? When I said that, and most people would say that, most coaches would say that, but I don't say that because even then you are innocent. Even then those excuses are not something we want to be harsh with ourselves about. Instead, this new paradigm lets you know how to harness the symmetry in the deeper reasons behind why you aren't moving forward. It lets you move into aligned action. In fact, I have a whole program that, that helps people see why am I not doing that thing if I really want it. And that helps you take care of the really deep and you know tender reasons how you would get in your own way. And then you get to watch life show up and support you as you're in flow again. So you are still invited, even if you've got excuses and not sure you're able to make things happen yet. We're all about helping those parts of you that have been unable to move forward. Also, a lot of people would say that if you're absolutely convinced that others are the cause of your pain and there's no hope but to stay away from them or figure out how to make them change and you don't really want to work on yourself. But guess what? That's not actually a deal breaker either because we harness that hopelessness and the judgments on others and the, the feeling that it will only work if someone else makes a change. And that is actually the way we help you help yourself. As long as you're willing to open your mind, this will show you some of your former blind spots. So please stay. There's a lot of hope here for real change and real peace. So I'm glad you're here. And before we dive into those three parts, you may be thinking, well, why should I listen to Sean? Who is she anyway? <laughs> it's a good question. As the leading expert in the field of self-solidarity and founder and CEO of the Center for Unconditional Connection, I'm pioneering a movement that is powered by radical self-forgiveness and empowers women and men to stand with, by, and for themselves no matter what. Having spent 30 years researching and living the science of unconditional connection to self, others, and life, I've been called the master coach of master coaches. My amazing team and I empower people to forgive and fall in love with themselves so they experience all of life as love and unconditional support. Everyone on my team also knows and uses this work as well as offering their own amazing level of expertise and support for our clients. I am one of a handful of people in the world who were certified as a facilitator of the work of Byron Katie, which is a powerful form of inquiry-based stress relief. 
as an integral part of my own model for unconditional thriving called the no matter what way i use the work during my retreats and online groups and as an element in my executive coaching perhaps the biggest reason i have something to give is that all this grew out of my own challenges and my own story which is like your story in some important ways or you probably wouldn't be here you see i get it i've been there done that there's nothing special about me except that I could have been the poster child for powerful people who disempower and abandon themselves when it matters most. My life always looked pretty good on the outside. In fact, it looked most amazing in my mid-40s right before it started to crash. I was finally married. We were living in a beautiful spot on the water near Washington, D.C. I had a promising career as managing editor at a university I was speaking on stages internationally about a book I had written and a cause I was passionate about, um, given that that book had been published in many, many languages. And best of all, my dream of adopting our daughter from China had finally come through. So my life looked pretty perfect, but I was drowning in anxiety and overwhelm and compromise in my marriage and the workplace. I barely knew who I was or what I wanted in my seemingly idyllic life. My mindset and my health quickly began sinking. Something had to change. I couldn't keep running on this hamster wheel of self-doubt, running myself ragged to please and placate the unpleasable people in my life. Finally, life forced me to stop. Before I could wake up to the things I teach now, and that ultimately saved me, my life completely fell apart. First my health, then my big career, then my marriage. All of it crashed in the space of nine months. Under the weight of my own long-term anxiety, codependence, food addiction, second guessing all of my decisions and trying to keep everyone happy all the time. I had been carrying others' fears and negativity along with me, draining my energy as I also kept trying to do my own mission in a controversial field, draining my life force, paralyzing my big vision, both forging ahead with that vision and also waiting for support and approval from stakeholders with the clear direction I saw for my field, my family, and the planet. After almost a decade of searching and every form of inner work since that big life crash, I had made progress, but I really wasn't better spiritually, emotionally, or physically. Then I finally saw it. There was a missing piece we were never taught. I discovered that I could reliably use whatever triggered me in any situation to shift my emotional state from point A to point B. The secret that I saw was something I started to realize is a completely reliable occurrence, a principle of nature. And it kind of goes like this. What each of us needs to feel better is contained within the very thing that has the power to upset, anger, sadden, or scare us in that moment. It's a whole new world when you start to rely on this principle to live in happy symmetry, letting self, others, and life reflect back to you how you can evolve. From this principle, I developed a simple proven process that I have shared with many over the years that lets you rewrite the script from self-sabotage to deep self-love. Of course, having been on the long spiritual journey, I had heard all kinds of things like, oh yeah, whatever hurts is just a reflection, everything is a mirror, but still I didn't know the how. I really could not use that to help me. The things that hurt just drove me into the ground. I didn't know what to do with them. But this no matter what way of being with yourself, others, and life lets you not be so reactive, stop walking on eggshells, fearing others' reactions, not need so much external validation to feel happy, worthy, and trust your vision, helps you calm the distraction and refocus on your cherished goals, your purpose, your contributions, helps you get out of your own way by efficiently rewiring the patterns of thought that have sabotaged your personal, professional, and relationship success and self-care. So 
Let's dive into it. When it comes to learning these safe and powerful ways to stop abandoning yourself, unapologetically live your vision, and creating a life that works on every level, we start by debunking some beliefs and misconceptions, which is part one. Some of them sound good and often bring a lot of hope for newcomers into the spiritual space. I got very excited when I started buying into a lot of these things, and then I started realizing that nothing was changing. So these promises, I want to share how they might fail to account for some simple principles that are not well known, meaning that people fail to get the changes they're hoping for. So let's debunk and take care of some misconceptions or failed promises. Number one is... One thing that almost all of us came to believe, so it creates a huge shift when you realize it wasn't the whole story, is the idea that your situation or what another person is saying and doing is creating your pain and reactivity. It's just something we all believe we bought into it. They do X, I feel bad. Something happens, we think they caused it. And that also is the basis for blame. And yet, And one failed promise that has started to go along with that, especially recently with so much talk of boundaries and trauma and things, is that the idea that you what you need to do is set stricter boundaries or even cut the troublemakers out of your life. So while I am no way suggesting you tolerate emotional or physical abuse, it is eye opening to witness what we can handle and who becomes our great teacher and therefore a big blessing in our life once we know how to use whatever triggers us to shine a light on our own blind spots. That button pusher reveals the ways we are doing to ourselves and others what we thought was being done to us. Even with a childhood when we may have taken on the scripts that our persecutors use on us, that doesn't make them right, it doesn't excuse or condone their behavior, and yet it makes us often react to life in ineffective ways. So those early or later button pushers reveal the ways, again, that we are doing to ourselves and others what we thought was being done to us. The ball is suddenly back in your court, and there is great hope when you see that much of what you thought was the problem was just your mind projecting that old programming from childhood and the needs onto the other person or situation directly out of your past wounds and the innocent beliefs those traumas created. Once we understand that all our reactions originate from that thinking and the past, present, and future meaning we are placing on the stressful event, we no longer feel like a victim of others' choices and behaviors. We see that it is never the other person or situation. It is what we are believing about them. And for that reason, a hundred different people would react in a hundred different ways. Your reaction is your own. And once you know how to use what upsets you to transform the thinking so that you can stop placing your well-being in others' hands, you not only see and hear them just as they are in their own innocence, but where they're also over there believing their own thoughts, but you also gain clarity about how to respond so that you don't lose yourself, drive others away, or place yourself in harm's way. With this new understanding, you can live happily along until the next time you find yourself triggered, which is simply your golden invitation to evolve your thinking to greater peace and freedom. Your spouse, your boss, and others don't need to change. But as you change your perspective, your behavior, and your relationship with yourself, they will change. As Michelle, a member of our community who is an attorney, said, Sean saved my marriage in one session. I saw how the problem was all happening inside me. I wasn't really sure our marriage was going to work, but now he is truly the love of my life and my best friend. I cannot imagine life without him. When you change that interior landscape and know how to turn each external button pusher into a path to peace your partner or others appear to change too and you get very clear about how to heal your life now that you know your thoughts 
or what is creating your reactivity, that's good news, right? So let's go on to misconception or failed promise number two. So yeah, that's good news. However, don't oversimplify the idea that your thoughts create your reality and then start thinking it's all your fault if things don't go well or if you can't overcome your fears or negativity. There is a party line out there that, just, that says, well, your thoughts are like a buffet, so you just need to choose different ones. This can set up an impossible standard, mostly because I have found the idea that we choose our thoughts is faulty to start with. Even though we're all buying into it, take a look for yourself. First of all, when a stressful thought arises, you didn't choose it. It just popped in. And once you are believing it, it is the lens through which you see the world and therefore it drives your behavior. So it's not like you could have just chosen another one since you didn't choose that one. It happened to you outside of your control, out of your programming, out of the stimulus in your environment. Second, if you are believing a survival-driven thought, it is wired to save you, and therefore it's really tenacious. So it's not that easy to just choose another one. But that doesn't mean there's nothing we can do. In fact, by using what we know about the brain, there is much we can do now to rewrite those reactive survival driven thoughts in fact that's what this no matter what work is about so before we move on to misconception number three i want to say three things to bring compassion and end the practice of beating yourself up for not being in a better place or blame yourself for the thinking that you believe is creating your reality first it's not your fault you didn't ask for where you're stuck now. You did not consciously create the blame, shame, and worst case scenario habits of mind that cause you to react so strongly. It's the way our brains are wired for survival. And if you ignore or pave over them with positivity, that childlike part of you that has not yet learned another way will just hug your leg tighter and scream louder which can translate into anxiety, chronic illness, passive aggressive reactions, or depression. Second, it's not your fault. You are innocent in that you didn't know another way. If you had, you would have used it. Many of us grew up in an environment that included blame and shame. So we still toggle between blame, judgment, and resentment of others, and then back over to guilt, regret, shame, and judgment of ourselves. Third, it's not your fault. Our survival instincts told us it wasn't safe to point to the elephant in the room, so many of us came to believe we were the problem when we were in the face of an abusive or overpowering caretaker as children or even within our own marriage. Even powerful change makers often disempower ourselves when it matters most, and it separates us from ourselves, our dreams, and those we love. We learned early to please placate and turn ourselves into a pretzel. Rather than flee or fight back, we learned to freeze and turn it on ourselves, beat ourselves up, or fawn that lesser known survival reaction we've got fight flight freeze and fawn which is to be submissive we didn't understand that since the whole dynamic was an inside job there is a way to fix it from the inside now rather than trying to get others love and approval back we can find that getting ourselves back clears up the whole thing if you just practice mindfulness and meditate here is misconception or failed promise number three becoming the observer of your thoughts and feelings your difficult situations will turn around well stepping into the role of the mindful observer rather than the believer of the thinking is a huge step forward and can help in so many ways however our stressful thoughts and the reactive emotions they generate are a cry for help we can heal our struggles efficiently and sometimes instantly when we know how to go beyond mindfulness. 
I really focus on and teach how to get free of the somatic, somatic reactions to our own traumatic experiences. We need to be able to harness our intellect to see through its own fearful fallacies and debunk the meaning we connect to the triggering events. Then the same thoughts and knee-jerk reactions don't keep coming back because your mind can no longer believe its own story. Just observing the thoughts isn't enough. Most of us were not taught how to turn our triggers and upsets into a living meditation that is our direct path to peace. It turns out these upset part of us, parts of us are desperately needing our help. We need to not just observe the thoughts, but proactively expose the errors in our mind's own logic. In this way, the thinking lets go. It can't believe its own story anymore, so it doesn't keep coming back into your meditations and you're trying to fall asleep and everything. We truly are able to set those tenacious survival scripts free once and for all. So failed promise or misconception number four is you should not think, write, say, or in any way put the focus on negative or scarcity thoughts because you will manifest that. There's much talk in the spiritual space about creating your own reality, and some people are very hard on themselves for the negative perceptions that come to their mind, believing they will then have manifested the opposite of what they want by having stated that thought acknowledged it, spoken it out loud, or heaven forbid, written it down. But it turns out that observing the thought, creating stress, saying it out loud in a safe space, and writing it down in a simple, clear way so it can be questioned is the start of healing it. When we fear and work hard to look away from what scares us or stuff it down, it gains power. When we see those scared, angry, anxious thoughts of lack, loss, and pain as innocent children who just need us to listen, and we put the thoughts on paper in a very simple, structured way, we can inquire into them, see the cost of them, see the other side, see a logic that allows us to get free and manifest the very things that are coming our way. Those Ideas do live in us, no matter how petty or ugly, whether we write them down or not. We can't fool ourselves out of that. So with this process, we are able to turn the toxic thoughts around so they have no more power over us or our reality. It is so much fun to completely neutralize a stressful thought and the emotional charge that comes with it so that you simply cannot even get hold of that icky feeling of anger or anxiety anymore as you no longer can believe the story that was creating the cascade of emotional chemicals. Once you know this simple process of getting your fear-driven thoughts out of the way, there's an instant freedom and relief to parts of you that have been carrying the burden of believing those thoughts. So misconception fail promise number five if you want to be happy and what people call spiritual, you just need to stop judging and having expectations. It turns out this prescription promoted in almost every religion is indeed a path to forgiveness and unconditional love, but we were never taught how to get there. In fact, my sense is that it would be impossible for humans not to judge or create expectations since our brains are judgment machines. Survival dictates that the mind names and makes instant judgments about what is happening. This is a bad thing. This is a good thing. This will hurt me. This is something I can eat. As such, our minds also create expectations for ourselves, others, or life. Conditions. I have discovered that there is really just one basic thought behind all emotional pain. It is a conditional thought, meaning sort of an if only. If only blank, then I will feel happy or safe or free or beautiful or loved. And there are six ways I have discovered that the thought plays out, that one thought. It turns out that while we cannot stop our brains from judging, we can almost instantly release the chronic, ever-increasing numbers of judgments. 
In fact, we can bring it down very close to zero, which also heals the separating effect of our judgments and fears. But we can't just say, I'm not going to judge. The judgments actually have to get neutralized so that they don't feel they're accomplishing anything. We can feel safe in almost any circumstance when we live in this no matter what way, no matter what, without conditions. Once we spot those conditional thoughts and the judgments about our past, present, or future, we can gently and compassionately, but also quickly, overturn them to set ourselves free and move into what I call a state of unconditionality, at least around that specific situation or person that leads me to the next misconception which is that unconditional love is only attainable by spiritual masters like jesus or buddha on the contrary i see unconditional love showing up in my clients and myself every day when those clients question the thinking that was annoying or scaring them about another person or situation the mind-made conditions fall away leaving them in a natural state of unconditional love and connection. Over time, we move into what I call unconditionality. As I mentioned before, where you almost instantly spot and see through your conditions and return to love. It's about that one basic thought behind all emotional pain and the ease of spotting and reversing it creates states of unconditional safety, unconditional thriving, unconditional forgiveness, prosperity. It is remarkably easy to see through our mind-made conditions, the things that are creating our suffering in ourselves and others, when we stop and take a look using my will of self-love and the work, which are the two pillars of my no matter what way this damaging condition that is sets up number seven is one that many of us as children arrived at when an adult was angry at us or upset with themselves or others or neglecting us our brain decided there must be something wrong with us that caused them to distance and become emotionally unavailable to us we thought to ourselves well, the way to do better is to watch for people's reactions to indicate whether I got it right. So I'll know that I am lovable and safe. And if they aren't happy, it means I did it wrong or I'm not enough. If I'm hard enough on myself, I'll do it better next time. But being hard on ourselves just tears ourselves down, doesn't let us really see the tender, innocent reasons we could not do better, leaves our worth in the hands of others or outcomes. It is phenomenal how much changes when people who learn my wheel of self-love start to be on their own side, cheer themselves on, find their own innocence, and give themselves the love and forgiveness they crave from others. One of my clients who was most resistant to self-forgiveness because she had come to believe that she was a slacker and that if she wasn't hard on herself, she wouldn't do anything, um, she found out recently that the opposite is true. In the old days, she was often paralyzed with anxiety and depression from all the self-criticism. Now that she knows how to stand with by and for herself no matter what, she finally left the job she was so afraid to leave for fear she couldn't survive financially unless she became her highest earning year ever. Because step two of the will of self-love moves you into a place of fearless faith in the life that shows up, she's been able to make many life-changing decisions, be more efficient in the day-to-day, -day, and take more risks without fear of self-recrimination. Her biggest takeaway from a recent retreat was that she now finally sees the absolute uselessness of beating herself up, and so many of the other participants echoed that sentiment after she had had said it. I'm going to be telling you more about this and about a free gift you will be receiving so you can learn it yourself as long as you stay tuned, stay till the end. And we're going to be talking about this wheel of self-love and self-solidarity in part two. We're almost there. So failed promise and misconception number eight is that if you are chronically indecisive, it is because you fear making the wrong choice. And it's based on the fallacy that your mind knows what would be best and worst outcome in any situation. So after decades of second guessing my choices and getting stuck in loops of indecision, I realized that it was not the outcome I was fearing as much as my own state of regret hell. 
In other words, what I feared most was that inescapable, kicked in the stomach feeling of holding myself responsible for other people's reactions or outcomes I didn't want, putting myself on a hamster wheel of regret, unforgiveness, and cruel self-criticism where I could lay awake visualizing the ways I wish it had gone rethinking my steps or my words, beating myself up whenever I left a meeting or a conversation with a loved one. It was just my natural state to want to go right into self-blame until I discovered the wheel of self-love, again, which I will tell you about in part two. Nothing in my life had shown me a way to stop mercilessly holding myself responsible for anything and everything that could go wrong including other people's reactions to me and the choices about how I spent my time. Once I learned that will of self-love, I no longer feared making decisions. It was amazing to realize that that was the basis of my indecisiveness, is that I was just afraid that either way, no matter what I decided, I would go into regret hell. So now I make hundreds of decisions a day, some of them with very high stakes. Step two of the will of self-love gets my mind right-sized, so I no longer confuse my decision by getting caught up in what I can't control. It makes it clear that your mind simply cannot know what is a good or a bad outcome or what is being accomplished on a grander scale or what anything really means. Being so focused on the outcome we wanted and then beating ourselves up when it doesn't go well is just the monkey mind trying to play God. And it is such a relief to allow it to let go of that role and go out to play. So finally then, failed promise number nine. That someone told me the other day that they thought that since they had spent their life developing these issues, that they aren't going away overnight and they need to get more of this and more of that kind of spiritual approach or energy work or just all different kinds of things that she listed because the trauma is held in her body. Well, I say even with much somatic work, the patterns aren't going away until your mind can see the errors in its own logic and sees what that is costing you. And then, like a hot stove, when it does see through its own story and sees that it hurts, it quickly stops using it as a weapon of self-destruction and holding the patterns in your body. So my experience was that it was taking a very long time and all the somatic work and everything I tried and the amazing practitioners I was led to that those patterns still stayed stuck. So we now know a simple way to use the brain wiring to transform the hard stuff into a path back to you. And because I also do a lot of feeling with work with you along inside of your body as you're transforming the thoughts the places where the emotional charge was held go away along with the thinking that was keeping them in place is never too late it does not take long and it just keeps going deeper and getting better I believe that not all of what you find out there in the spiritual and self-help space is created equal. I believe the guru is inside you and that we are wired to evolve ourselves and that life's painful moments are wired to bring you each lesson you need to heal them. Like Donna, who was so relieved to find that the great teachers and healers she needed were standing right in front of her in her husband, her grown sons, her difficult childhood memories. So what is it for you? That weight gain, those political parties, that bossy work colleague. So with your permission, I'd love to show you how you can get real results for yourself, not just in your marriage or your work relationships, but in your relationship with time, with money, your body, a parent or child. But before we go on to part two, I hope you get this one thing. You get to thrive this time, no matter what happens, no matter what happened in the past. No matter who is angry or leaves, no matter what the future brings, and let's address one elephant in the room. 
You may be the opposite of the person I just quoted who thinks she needs to try everything. You may say, but I've already done enough inner work. I've done the counseling, read the books, done the energy work, listened to the podcasts. I've had the conversations with my spouse. I've tried all kinds of systems. I've done all the meditation and yoga. I've studied Buddhism. I've got some really good spiritual practices and psychological theories down. Do you feel that way? If so, good. Yeah, I mean, put a yes in the chat box. If you feel that you've done it all, I get it. That was me. And you may indeed feel much better than you used to and be far more enlightened than your friends who haven't. But despite all that inner work, the elephant in the room who was my constant companion was that I was still racked with fear of abandonment with anxiety, with need to control the future, with regret over my own actions and re resentment <laughs> of others because I felt like a victim of their choices and behaviors. I simply did not know how to shift my emotional state from point A to point B and stop the toll my brain's wiring was taking on my body and relationships. But I do now. And I've also learned the most efficient ways to teach it to others. I finally cracked the code on self-metamorphosis, tackling both the blame and shame sides of the coin. The big how I will tell you about next in parts two and three. The simple how that I didn't have and that so many of us don't and that can change the rest of your life. In fact, what I'm about to tell you was such a big deal for me that I call it the shift of a lifetime. It changes every relationship, especially the one with yourself and the parts of your life where you still struggle, every single one. That makes marriage or the workplace or striving toward any vision or mission your own private gold mine. So even if you said, yes, I've had enough, consider that there may be a missing piece for you, a missing P-E-A-C-E -E, that has made all the difference for me and so many of my thriving clients. Like Barbara, who's a therapist herself, here on the swing at one of my retreats, she started using these simple systems immediately in her own work with her clients, and so many coaches and healers do when they come into this cocoon of mine. We, but even more importantly, this work allowed her to tackle every area of her life that still needed these reliable tools for self-evolution despite all her inner work. She wrote one day on our Facebook group about her husband of many years, I feel like I'm getting to know the guy I met in college all over again. And that was just from changes she made on her side of the street. These simple systems have allowed her to be so fearless in turning whatever life brings into a gift of freedom and self-evolution that I even made a jib-jab birthday video for her to celebrate her fearless attitude that she had taken on. I love that the words to the song say, no doubts around me, I finally found me, which is so like the Get You Back boot camp she participated in. Because this worked so well for her, she at first thought, she didn't need to keep on going or stay with our groups, but later realized that she wanted to, so she came back. This fearless win-win way of life and this community of folks who are living in symmetry had become a place to let her life continue to let life continue taking her deeper so she could clean up whatever is left and be of greater and greater service to her clients and her family, which was certainly true. And it had also become her tribe here, a safe spot in the world like nothing else she had found where she could both give and receive. With me as a trusted guide who could safely go to the darkest places and back with her and where she had made friends for life. So do you have a big 100% reliable foolproof method to proactively shift out of blame, shame, fear, regret, resentment? Do you want a missing P-E-A-C-E -E piece that pulls together everything you've learned so that life truly makes sense? Do you have a community of self-responsible people around you who share that mindset? After a lifetime of the self-criticism, self-compromise, and self-censorship that psychologists would call self-abandonment, 
I finally discovered a groundbreaking method with three simple steps that bring a kind of instant clarity that is the hallmark of listening to yourself and honoring the cues your heart is giving you. With it, you move naturally into action that feels aligned with you because you are finally free of the hell of regret and self-criticism. After so much of our lives being about marriage or relationships with others, the women who learn this method adore having a mad love affair with what I call the littlest parts of themselves. Flipping self-abandonment to self-solidarity also enhances our ability to focus, produce, and collaborate with others no matter where we go. One of the biggest turning points for Barbara and others was learning an efficient way to invest in their own innocence and return the gift of freedom to themselves. So that's what we will talk about here in part two, how to feel safe, seen, and supported no matter what. Standing with, by, and for yourself in sweet self-solidarity, even in situations where you have felt minimized or powerless in the presence of others or your own inner critic. So while we have lots of testimonials and success stories, I'm going to use myself as the example for this one. I have so enjoyed not only discovering the concept of self-solidarity, but watching this no matter what framework through my days and nights continue to dissolve a lifetime of beating myself up, fearing the outcomes of my own or others' choices, and feeling indecisive or paralyzed in my life and relationships. It's like the water's finally calmed and cleared for me and for so many others I've been able to help. Before I discovered the wheel of self-love, I blamed myself for everything, not really knowing how amazing I was, always judging my own actions based on others' reactions to me, putting all my focus on placating the angry or fear-driven people in my life, leaving behind so much of what I brought to the table. I also blamed others, not understanding how it was my own stinking thing and that was getting in the way. Even though I mentioned my journey before, I'll take a few minutes now to share the story of when I set my sights on no longer turning on myself and leaving my well-being in others' hands and eventually discovering the tools that end the hell of regret and self-abandonment. There's a picture of me on my brother's lap with my sister as we were all young adults. <laughs> Looking back, I had a normal enough childhood and adolescence, and I can see that I was a powerful force in many aspects aspects of my adult life, in my field, in my marriage, parenting, and friendships. But as I've mentioned, I suffered with high anxiety in the not enough story in food and relationship addiction, hypervigilant for validation or a disapproval, watching for every little way that signaled that someone might be abandoning me, which caused me to abandon myself and brought on eventually that parade of chronic symptoms and pain that I referred to. So with so many women in the same boat, we often have to wonder what causes us to turn on ourselves and need this level of affirmation from others. Well, there's usually a good reason we decided as children that we needed to abandon ourselves to get our needs met. In my case, as someone raised by a mom who was so wonderful in so many ways, but could also turn on herself and others in kind of a Jekyll and Hyde moment, I came to believe, like so many children do, that something was wrong with me. It seems my child mind decided that trying to fix it for her by shaming, criticizing, and beating myself up was the way to correct whatever was wrong with me and to get her to come back from those blaming and shaming places and make everything okay. So many people grew up believing that they had to be someone else or do something else to get their caretaker to come back from a place of blaming or shaming or neglect. I became willing to do anything to get her and later others to not abandon me emotionally. I can see now that in my innocent reaction to this wonderful woman who was following the tone of the times and the model she received as a child and who didn't have the tools to move herself into trusting reality or herself, it makes sense that our children develop these survival-driven habits of abandoning themselves in a quest to get us to come back and assure assure those children that we that they are okay. 
I go much more deeply into the cost to ourselves, our immune system, our children, our society, and passing along these general generational habits of self-abandonment in our courses. And we see that the things changing before our eyes and the families that are so much improved when the women rewire that part of their brain. So after a lifetime of codependent striving, I finally realized that all along it was me I needed to get back, not my mom or my husband or the book critics or anyone else. Because you see, if you're like me, you're the one who abandons your dear self. So you're the one who needs to come home. I carried that trying hard and blaming myself into my marriage where things kept getting more and more out of balance and my old survival strategy of beating myself up caused great suffering with our respective resentments continuing to grow and drive us apart. Like many women, I worked so hard on myself in counseling and reading every self-help book, believing I could fix it all. But for most of my life, none of that taught me the how. That survival-driven loop of entanglement and the need for validation and feedback from others as a misguided way to feel whole is the birth of codependence that later makes relationships such a challenging place. And as much as I wanted to feel better, I didn't have the tools I teach today. On the way to and after the big life crash I talked about earlier, everything I feared came true. I lost so much of what I had worked so hard to hold on to and was forced to face my worst fears. But there was a turning point where I stopped throwing myself off the cliff for others and started creating a life that works. It was just weeks before my marriage ended. We were staying in a bed and breakfast on an anniversary trip. That was one of my last efforts to put our marriage back together. And I was telling myself that there was hope for my health and my marriage and that we were getting back on track. But then something my husband said to me created a light bulb moment of realization. I saw with crystal clarity that the way out was not by trying to change him or the relationship. I don't even remember what he said, but in that moment, I saw that he could not give me what I was seeking. It was up to me. It was me I had lost along the way, and I saw that it was me I needed to get back, not him, even if it meant losing him. I saw that my very survival was at stake and that my path to thriving and being the best mom for my daughter had little to do with healing my relationship to him. It was about my relationship to myself. I got up from our bed and ran a bath, and in the clawfoot bathtub at that bed and breakfast, I cried silently, possibly the hardest I had cried in my life, and yet I also felt the most free. My tears were not about the loss of my husband. I was mourning the cost of having lost myself for so long. Even more so, they were tears of sweet relief and reconciliation, self-reconciliation, relief at my determination to make amends for all the ways I had abandoned myself over the years, relief at the clear vision of restoring a long-lost commitment to the parts of me I had abandoned, relief at knowing that no matter what, I was on a road back. I saw that I was the hero I was waiting for. I knew I couldn't keep making compromises, always pretzeling and waiting for someone else to make everything okay for me. I knew that in that moment, I would be okay, no matter what happened next. It was that first glimpse of what I now call self-solidarity. Three weeks later, I left my marriage. Even though most of the people I work with have radical turnarounds in their marriage and things get better, we didn't. I think we might still be together if I had known then what I know now. So while I got a glimpse in that bathtub moment of the kind of self-solidarity, peace, happiness, health, and boundless energy I enjoy today, I still didn't have a way to get there. After my disability and divorce, I kept chasing the nutritional cures, as I mentioned, continuing counseling, spiritual study, meditation, 12-step programs. It was all helpful, but I still didn't feel healthy, happy, whole, calm, or prosperous. It wasn't until much later that I discovered the end of regret hell. Believe it or not, also in a bathtub, but that's a story for another time that you can read about in my book. 
In the process of developing and living it, I have become an expert on self-forgiveness and on the state of inner advocacy I call self-solidarity. I developed the process that finally set me free into a one-page PDF, then an 18-page happiness hack, then a smaller book called The Spark of Self-Love, and now I'm almost done with a much larger book, each going deeply, more deeply, into the cost of self-criticism and how to reverse these uniquely human habits we call regret, guilt, and self-doubt. Tens of thousands have now benefited from this new understanding and my simple common sense steps that transform regret, self-doubt, and indecision into self-forgiveness, self-confidence, and self-advocacy. In fact, I'm on a mission to share it with many more, including you, if you want freedom and want to join me in this movement to end the crazy societal norm of self-censor, self-loathing, and self-abandonment, especially among women and girls starting at such a young age. So I will be sending out my original Wheel of Self-Love one-page cheat sheet to anyone who finishes watching this webinar. It's normally only available to people in my paid programs where I trust they are motivated to learn it and use it. While I would want to, you to get the full benefit of what I teach in those programs, I will summarize right here what happens in each step. So here is a quick summary of how to stop beating yourself up for good and move into sweet self-solidarity. Even though I had wanted to forgive myself and stop being hard on myself, no one was teaching me the how without any reliability. I honestly thought my regret, guilt, and second guessing were a life sentence till I learned what to do with them. One of my newest clients told her counselor of many years, who told me her counselor of many years asked her, when are you ever going to forgive yourself? It's almost like she, he thought she was being stubborn, but he had not shown her how, nor had anyone else. Yet within a week after taking my five-day thought detox challenge and having only one session with me, she got a total shift and all those things about herself and her life that she had hated along the way took on a different meaning she said she felt lighter than any time in her entire life but then something came up to drag her back into self-hatred but that was only because she simply had not learned the self wheel of self-love for herself once you do you become the hero you've been waiting for she now has forgiven so much lifetime regret as well as no longer beating herself up for all the little things so again, while I would want you to get the full benefit of the how I teach in those programs, I'll not only send the one-page cheat sheet, but I'll also summarize it here, the how to stop beating yourself up for good and move into sweet self-solidarity. So number one is simply to find your own innocence, stand by the you that you were in that moment and move into complete self-forgiveness and the will of self-love that you'll be getting if you stay till the end will sh we'll tell you more about how, just asking yourself a simple question. Number two is to debunk the fear that creates regret, guilt, self-doubt, and indecision. We wouldn't even go into those states if there wasn't, if we weren't fearing something. And number three is to become your own hero by giving yourself what you crave from others and life. Once you understand how to do that, then moving forward is unconditional. In addition to sending out that will of self-love one-page sheet, which has the three steps I just mentioned broken down into specific actions, you'll also get a promo code to get my Spark of Self-Love book for half price. Um, that this will, those of you who stayed to the end, this book has been life-changing for a lot of people as it goes much more deeply into how of self-forgiveness and self-solidarity, as well as the story of how the revelation that created this tool finally saved me from my habit of regret hell after so many years of not being able to accept and forgive my words, actions, and decisions. It's soon to be published in paper. You can get it instantly as a digital flip book for half its usual cost once you know once you let us know you've read it, you'll also be given an opportunity to discuss the book or work on how to apply it to situations where you experience regret, self-doubt, or indecision. 
the real gift you get from this wheel of self-love and the one I'm talking about next in part three is that you know how to turn your inner critic into the champion of your happiness for the rest of your life with no matter what self-forgiveness and unshakable self-advocacy as tools that will now be your devoted companions in every situation. You can get out of your own way and glide easily through your days and nights, harnessing the symmetry inherent in whatever upsets you as your tailor-made path back to peace and connection. How would it feel if you could feel safe, seen, and supported from the inside out no matter what is happening without abandoning yourself to seek external validation? You become the hero you've been waiting for. How would it feel if you could feel comfortable in your own skin and truly trust whatever life brings without needing to affirm over your toxic thoughts and intense reactions to life or pretend you have faith or spirituality that you've read about and it sounds good but you haven't found for yourself? Now you're either loving life as it comes or using what triggers you to wake yourself up. Living in this way means no bad outcomes. What would it be like if you had a reliable way to end the endless arguing, the high anxiety over what will happen next, or the fearful feeling that you or your partner or your child or your boss are not enough? Imagine ending the cycle of blame, shame, conflict, codependence, resentment, defensiveness, not enoughness at work and at home. And relax into a mix of compassion for each other, confidence in yourself, comfortable collaboration, and fun, exciting, unconditional kind of connection where you can't wait to see each other and love spending time together. Once you know how to help out those parts of you causing your reactivity, you are free, realizing that whatever triggers you is holding the key to your path to peace and self-evolution. Without having to play nice, be good, censor, or abandon yourself, no longer deciding what's okay for you to say, think, do, and feel based on what others want, compromising yourself by agreeing to terms that don't fit or feel safe for you. All that ends today because today you are beginning to learn about an efficient path to feeling safe, seen, and supported from the inside out, whether or not others change. And yet, living in that unshakable safety within yourself is such that others do change, whether on their own or because you are finally negotiating effectively on your own behalf. When you become different, they become different too. It is so gratifying to finally stop draining your energy and diverting your focus. Start trusting your vision for yourself, your family, and this planet so you can keep your own counsel and share your most cherished gifts. It is possible to write that book, give your full attention to the kids, make that major contribution in your family or the world, build that house or that business without the everyday drama that keeps you putting out fires, putting your needs and dreams last, and diverting your focus from the causes and contributions that feed your soul. Now I'll quickly put it all together by telling you about my signature system that harnesses the symmetry in whatever hurts or sabotages your goals as your direct path to confidence in yourself and your decisions so that you have a safe synergistic connection and you move forward in calm focused action. The beginning of that turning point came to me by way of the work of Byron Katie, four simple questions and a way to turn around your thinking that I still teach in my work today. But it was bigger than that. I saw that there was just one missing piece I had been searching for, realizing that there was a kind of reflection or mirror or symmetry that I could reliably use whatever triggered me to shift my emotional state from point A to point B. And that was that shift of a lifetime I mentioned earlier. The secret was this. All each of us needs to feel better is contained within the very thing that has the power to upset, anger, or scare us in that moment. By relying on this simple principle, I was able to finally reverse resentment and rekindle connection in my relationships. I experienced a lifetime personal paradigm shift when I saw that the very thing or person that was upsetting me is always without fail, no matter how bad or sad or scary it looks, like a sacred container holding my direct path out of my pain. Suddenly everything made sense. It was the beginning of the end of my fear 
of my own emotional states and of the things people could do to trigger them. Now I could see that no matter how good things are or how much inner work we've done, I saw that the entire spiritual journey is set up so that each person or event that still has the power to trigger us carries within it a unique code that reveals our path to peace and unlocks our exact next steps back to wholeness, freedom, and connection. The good news is that once you know how to harness them as your path to peace and healing, your difficulties in marriage or the workplace become a gold mine. With this new way of being with people and challenges and with my unwanted internal reactions, I started to sleep again after a six-year struggle with insomnia. My physical pain and illness began to subside and eventually disappeared completely. Chronic anxiety and daily emotional suffering finally cleared up. I felt only if I had known this when I was married, navigating my big career and publishing my first book, everything would have gone differently. I felt like I had finally seen the light, a dependable way out of my pain. I saw that a real life personal paradigm shift had happened within me. It was completely accessible to anyone, something absolutely reliable that I could pass along to others. So I became passionate about sharing it with others. I had found a way to come back from my long painful illness and isolation and I wanted to share it with the world. It still took years, but I was able to collapse it into the six keys of the no matter what way with the two pillars being the work and my will of self-love. This model is comprehensive and can reliably deal with any situation because it heals the specific fearful fallacies and survival strategies of blame and shame that drive any painful reaction. I needed a name for this concept, so I called it the reliable symmetry of happiness because it was so reliable. In other words, it seemed if I just did this process, it worked 100% of the time. The other part of the name was because so many of my clients honestly described themselves as finally happy. Over time, I saw that it was so completely defendable that as I mentioned before, it was like there was a natural law underlying it, a principle of the psyche where everything that needs to heal is reflected back to you in a very specific way that you can use to get free. So I started calling it the symmetry principle. It lets you use whatever upsets you to shift yourself almost instantly into peace. If you rely on this to let life's challenges shepherd you home you will find there is no such thing as a bad outcome you are either loving life or using what hurts to wake you up to the thinking that takes you away from life's limitless support from this entirely new way of approaching problems and pain i developed the no matter what way over the course of 10 years with this webinar being the premiere that releases my new version the no matter what way for those who stay, I will also send you a copy of all the shifts written in greater detail here. It is a simple, spiritually sound and efficient system that parlays the pain points of purposeful women and, well, anyone into direct path to peace. These six keys to dependable peace and unconditional connection have, again, my will of self-love and the turnarounds of the work as the two pillars that rewire the old blame and shame programming of our brains. Eventually, you are able to skip these two processes represented as the dark gray diamonds on each side and go straight up through the middle from pain to peace. Once these simple common sense processes begin to live within you, they create a new way of life that forms a straight line to living in symmetry with self, others, and life, which I call S-O-A-L. And if you look closely, you'll see that the symmetry principle is at the center of the model. This is really about freeing your mind, living your bliss, walking your talk, knowing the exact ways your mind gets in your own way. In addition to a number of shortcuts or happiness hacks that support the no matter what way, for example, what to do with fear of the future, I even developed an online quiz that helps you find your main self-sabotage style and I've identified six types of thoughts that will destroy peace and connection every time you engage in them. I am showing my Thought Detox logo here as I want to give you a powerful visual of how we are truly cleaning things up in there till you find yourself living with a light, open, self-evolving, visionary brain. 
The Detox is a wonderful digital challenge course that lets people quickly recognize and reverse the basic kinds of erroneous thinking that are sabotaging their happiness. And it all happens in just five days or less. Once you recognize these and know this method, it's easy to harness the way your brain is wired to flip those stressful thoughts into long-awaited prescriptions for change. Knowing the exact ways your mind gets in your way, sabotaging what you want most, and how to use your how your brain is wired to flip that into a long-awaited change leaves you no longer terrorized by your sinking thinking. Instead of being trapped in the prison of your thoughts, wishfully watching life go by, you become proactive on your own behalf, happily expectant and excited about whatever life brings in response. As you learn to live in symmetry with yourself, others, and life, your natural internal support mechanisms and practical external solutions will unfold with impeccable timing making each day easier, far more energized, fun, and free. You'll know exactly what to say and do in each situation because you will trust what shows up as you without regret, compassionate for the ways you are doing the best you can while still evolving efficiently out of your distraction and dysfunction. It is a true paradigm shift into a fearless win-win way of life when you begin to see that whatever hurts contains a kind of uncanny symmetry that can neutralize the fears that create regret, resentment, and separation from yourself and those closest to you. For example, you might feel that life is overwhelming and that many external factors or people, including your spouse, are the cause of your anxiety, anger, and alienation from yourself or others and the events of your daily life, but by knowing how to see the healing symmetry that is contained in your reactions and harness it to get you and your own happy choices back in any situation, it means you no longer need to go through your days and nights feeling like a victim of your circumstances or others' actions. Just like Annika, who made a career in the court systems of a huge city and felt quite jaded with life when she joined my private group and coaching private and group coaching programs. This bright, beautiful, physically active, self-disciplined woman was truly terrorized by the judgmental thoughts that made her believe no one else was carrying their own weight and that if she wanted anything done right, she had to do it herself. She truly felt like so many things were working against her, keeping her ruminating and trying to control others and outcomes. Since it was really her mind that was working against her, she could not see that she had viable options. So she had stayed stuck and unhappy with aspects of her home and work life. What the symmetry principle did almost instantly was to let her see how she was not a victim of others' choices or behaviors, and then others appeared to change too. In fact, she saw how they could become her great teacher by giving her a window into what she was doing to herself and how she was setting up the dominoes to keep getting the same unsatisfactory outcomes. We are blind to how the whole problem is an inside job and we don't actually need others to change to be happy until we learn these simple steps. She quickly learned how to turn around the thinking that was creating her own pain, how to use each situation as it arose, finding that these triggers held 100% reliable kind of peace and freedom she could access within herself, whether or not her situation or the people in it changed. This was revolutionary for her. So like so many who seem annoyed or critical of others, we found that when we went deeper that her inner critic was the worst part of all. She was merciless with herself, setting standards she could not possibly live up to, creating an inner rebellion and even paralysis that kept her from accomplishing certain goals. She saw that it did not work for her stellar intellect to just jump straight to turnarounds or affirmations. The logjam of annoyance and cruel judgment of herself and others didn't start to break up and flow until she and so many others like her really put these tools to work and reverse the deeper underlying beliefs and thought habits that were keeping her toxic mindset alive. So through the warm connections and revealing reflections created within our community, and it always is that way we've seen so far, she started to cut 
herself and others some slack, fall in love with her life and take actions to change things in really meaningful ways, becoming close to her stepdaughters, going after a position at work that was a better fit and making a plan to retire outside the city. It is wonderful to have the tools to become the highest, happiest, healthiest, most prosperous version of yourself with amazing positive impact on those whose lives you touch. So are you ready to reverse resentment and rekindle connection so you can feel safe, seen, and sane and supported in your most reactive relationships without needing others to change? Then, hey, you're the hero you've been waiting for. And if you're ready to get you back, which tends to make all the rest fall into place, then let's get started helping out the littlest parts of you that are still suffering so you can stand with, by, and for yourself in unshakable self-solidarity. No matter who else supports you or what else happens, restoring your childlike energy, openness, and resourcefulness to create win-win outcomes at every turn. If even one of those things sounds good and are what you've been craving, then say yes to yourself. Or even put, even type, I'm in, into the chat right now, not for my benefit. Put yes or say I'm in. It's not for my benefit, it's for yours. As a message to the littlest parts of you that you're going to be there for them from now on. And regarding strengthening that commitment to you, a study in the Harvard Business Review showed that we are five times more likely to achieve our intentions when we write them down. Now is your moment to 5x your happiness and connection to life. So that leads us to the piece I teach that I don't see anyone else teaching. This no matter what way of living where you harness the healing symmetry in whatever upsets you has been the end of seeking for many. Very clear and predictable and trying to piece together these important shifts from a number of other different sources does not, in my experience, work for people. The continuity and connectedness of these steps and the simple tools that you can have with you for life that create each of these shifts provide an answer that eluded us so far. And within a community of people who understand it and provide reflection and insights through their own work, a whole new way of living awaits you. Whether you do private work with me or in a group, if you've been struggling week after week, month after month, even year after year, trying to find a solution, over-functioning in an effort to feel safe, trying to control every aspect of your busy life, hoping to get yourself or the other person to change, but nothing has really worked, I believe you will find it surprisingly easy to turn around the thinking that has been creating your suffering once you know how. With the no matter what way, you reconnect unconditionally to yourself, others, and life. Without it, you keep getting further and further from who and how you want to be and your personal or professional relationships get further and further from what you want or need. You can't afford to keep doing what you're currently doing and not be living in symmetry with yourself, others, and life. Your happiness, health, relationships, productivity, and prosperity are all at stake. If you're on this webinar right now, chances are what you're doing isn't working or is working only partially or temporarily. So you need to make a real change, an efficient change, a change that works with the way your brain is wired and frees you to make new choices rather than making enticing promises that will likely fail you. If you believe it's possible to find your voice and stop doubting, censoring, and abandoning yourself in your relationship with yourself and others at home or at work, but you just don't know how, then each day that goes by costs you in opportunities for confidence, connection, calm, focused action, and meaningful contribution. If you believe it is possible to feel safe, seen, and supported no matter what, but you don't take the steps to learn how, 
then every day that goes by is robbing you of your essence, still not getting the most tender parts of you in a snuggly to enjoy an unshakable kind of safety within yourself and life. And if you believe it is truly possible to let life's challenges evolve you into unapologetically manifesting your vision for yourself, your family, your company, or the greater good, you just haven't gotten a chance to learn it at all or put it to work. And now I hope you have an instinctive knowing that this is all possible. And each day, month, and year that goes by without the skill needed to trust your vision and create a life that really works, you are actually losing time, money, health, and especially happiness. Then I want you to be next. What I offer will feel like a warm hug for every part of your life. I really do want this for you, even if I don't know you, because I have the joy of seeing it work for people and watching them find, like I did, that their life finally makes sense from all angles. It is the missing piece that I trust will eventually become the paradigm from which people live. It's just that most people aren't there yet. My mission is getting us there fast enough to save life on this planet and save life within your life, your marriage, your career. So you don't have to keep seeing ourselves and others as the enemy. And yet I am grateful for what came out of all my hardship and all the research with myself that is working for so many others who helped me test it. We have a system that works for anyone who wants to learn and use it. You are the hero you've been waiting for, so you get to decide whether to stay on the slow road or be carried along by life as if on a magic carpet. No, it's not magic. It's a science, but it feels like magic when you look at the person, sometimes yourself, who you were so upset with moments ago and feel connected, supported, and grateful instead. I believe you know there's more and I know how to help you get results. Feeling better is so much easier than we thought. You may get lucky and be able to access what you need through what I have given you today. Or you may spend 20 years in trial and error like I did. You don't want to wake up and feel like it's too late. Nor do you want to spend more time chasing strategies that do not really show you how to harness life's hardship for self-evolution and grow real faith in life. There is a cost to your body, your happiness, and manifesting your life vision from staying upset, feeling less than or more than others, and being distracted from your purpose by drama, conflict, and confusion. If you want and need a whole new way of seeing life where everything makes sense, an approach where real change emerges naturally from within, then I have an opportunity for you right now. I'm going to offer you a completely free chance to talk with me or one of my amazing coaches, depending on scheduling. No matter what, we will get to the bottom of how best to support you in supporting yourself. It all starts with this no matter what strategy call where we take inventory of the stuck or painful places you want to address and create a plan for real change. I can't say what that plan will look like yet as I will customize my recommendations for you based on one or more conversations. All I know is that we have a range of options that will work for anyone who wants to help themselves to happiness. You will leave that call with the exact blueprint that will take you from self-sabotage to self-solidarity, self-confidence, and the self-efficacy needed to implement your vision. So you stop beating yourself up for good and start to feel close to yourself and those around you feel lighter, healthier, more energetic than you have for years. You'll have the clarity about what is really going on in any situation, how to get your needs met and achieve your goals at home and in the workplace. Once you know you really want these outcomes for yourself, I will be so excited to get on a call with you and see how we can help. And if it feels like a good fit, you may have a chance to hear about my signature executive mastermind or private coaching programs. I don't work with everyone I talk to. I provide such comprehensive support that I have become pretty selective. My team and I make sure this is a good fit and that you are as invested in your own peace and freedom as I am. This is where it all starts. 
for all of the people who have turned their lives around and those who just continue to go deeper into self-aligned action, prosperity, and a life they love with a simple strategy call. That's where it started. Usually after coming to an in-person or online workshop, just like the one you're listening to, these women and others in our community have become very close to me and each other since we go deeply into what is really happening. And because bottom line, we are neutralizing the types of stressful thought patterns everyone seems to share so it is the end of shame or hiding the ripple effect of dedication to turning around their inner world and uh, is now turning around their families their workplace and this planet whether in groups or privately there is nothing this no matter what model can't handle and each person is focused on their own work so it's very safe scheduling this call is the most important thing you could do right now i can't think of any better way to spend your time than hopping on a call with me so we can finally get your most challenging problems solved by turning around the patterns creating them take the leap schedule the call you've got this and my team and i have got you if it feels like you don't have time because of all the challenges and overwhelm, then this is an excellent reason to book this call. Overwhelm is something we really know how to overcome. This model turns any challenge into a breakthrough and creates much more time, focus, and safety in your days and nights. So go ahead, book your call now, and be sure to fill out the form on the next page. We only have a few slots on the calendar over the next few days. Unfortunately, we'll have to cancel the call if you don't fill out that simple form on the next page after you select your time. I'm not doing that to be mean. It is that important for us to get a bit of a heads up about your situation before we get on the phone with you. So just grab your time slot first. Then you will be shown a few simple directions. You can write as much or as little as you want in those simple questions. Thank you so much for being here. I'm going to play you our one minute get you back montage and then put up a screen of the view from my upstairs balcony for one more minute to remind you of what you can create out of hardship so go ahead and book your call now you have nothing to lose and everything to gain i can't wait to talk with you click the link and let's see what we can heal and create much love See you soon on that call.